right now. On the connection, high school band members put down their instruments and pick some trash. We explain how this benefits their programs. Plus, we visit Monterey High School to highlight a special teacher and learn how she started her journey. Young people are making an impact at Lubbock Impact. We'll share the mission of this nonprofit agency. <laughs> and the Talkington School for Young Women Leaders celebrates the grand opening on their noon fine arts wing. We'll show you what's been added. All this plus McKenzie Middle School students support community by carving pumpkins. We'll explain how. And it's a Christmas classic, but now we get to see a new chapter. Sam shares details on the sequel to A Christmas Story in your entertainment connection. Welcome to The Connection. I'm Ezekiel Mata. And I'm Zachary Tharin. You may not have given it much thought, but if you attend Lubbock ISD football games, you know there's a lot of trash that gets left in the stands. You're right, Zach, but who picks it all up? It might surprise you to learn that it's actually the marching band members. Tolliver Durbin joins us now to explain. Here at Lowry Field, you may see the bright lights glaring across the field while the action happens. As the game is happening, many people get hungry. What you don't see is the trash that's left behind. And after every football game, the drumline cleans the locker room while the rest of the band tackles the trash left behind in the stands. We get paid as a band to do the stadium cleanups, and then that money gets put back into us. And so we get nicer things because we do the stadium cleanups. So uh, this year we were able to buy some nice Under Armour shirts because we had some extra money from the stadium cleanups. And also a lot of the stadium cleanup money went back to students to fund the Washington DC trip over the summer. I mean, it's good, you know, I don't mind it. Uh, help these, these people over here doing the, the stuff that they do, make their job easy, and then we get paid for it. The money will go to uh, the band fund, so whatever the band wants to spend, we get the, that money will come to us and we get to spin and use whatever we want, kind of. Usually they'll split the sections up, brass, woodwinds, and drumline. And then Color Guard would probably go with the woodwinds or the, the brass, depending on how the directors are feeling. For example, the brass will take the home side, and then the woodwinds will take the visitor's side, and then somebody will take the locker rooms. We'll all split up and do different jobs. We'll have to switch out the trash cans. Take all the trash bags out, uh, put all the trash cans it all up and then get paid for it. A thousand dollars goes to school. Hey, someone up here should get back. There's one up here if one of you can grab it for him. So we just finished cleaning up that locker room. Now we're fixing to go to the uh, visitor side locker room and clean up their locker clean up all that stuff in there. All the trash. Now we're waiting for the rest of the wait team to go away. <laughs> Somebody you got that right? <laughs> I'm gonna put this trash bag right here. Usually leave the bags in a group. Put the bags we, we put the pile. bags in the pile so the people that work here can get them easy and just transport them and they throw them away. I think the people complain about it because they don't realize that the money is really coming back towards them. But I think that really in the end is beneficial for everybody to do the stadium cleanups. W swinging meet from 50th Street, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Tolliver. Seniors at Estacado High School stepped up to help the community. Around 30 students volunteered to be election workers, but before they could get going, they had to take part in training. It really shocked me because I didn't think people our age, a lot of people, a lot of kids would sign up to do something like this. Just knowing how important it is and then how each vote counts, seeing everybody come out and vote and have their own opinion and how, how much like it really affects to see every person, like every vote matters it really comes to effect when you're actually watching it happen. Teachers hope that by getting involved early, students will be lifelong voters and maybe do even more in local government. It was a wild night for the Westerner feeder pattern. <laughs> students from each of the six elementary schools that feed into Lubbock High were invited to participate in a fun cheer camp. To finish out the camp, students showed their skills during the Lubbock High's game against Plainview. Over to you, Zeke. Hey, thanks, Zach. But now, I want to switch over to my home campus and highlight a phenomenal teacher we have here at Monterey High School. Because everyone has a story. Go ahead, take a look. 
Monterey High School. Here, everyone has a story, and that is no exception for one teacher who is always building connections with students. So let's take a trip and get some insight on a little bit about reading and a little bit about life. My job title is teacher at Monterey High School, specifically English 4. So total, I've been teaching for 14 years. This is my seventh year here at Monterey, my seventh in high school. Um, before that, I taught in college. She gets you, you get her. It's a good vibe, like, she'll like get down to your level. She's just a real cool teacher. She don't really, like, you do your work, she'll be real cool with you. I try to have people think about being better, doing better, um, because I'm constantly thinking about how I can be better um, at everything. In my senior year in high school, I had the best teacher ever, Mrs. Hunley. Um, she made English fun. We did cool things. It was honors English cl class. It was hard literature, was but she made it fun. Um, and in fact, I didn't even apply for this job. It was a total God thing um, that I'm here at Monterey, and I absolutely know it's where I'm supposed to be what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm constantly questioning myself. Am I doing what's best for the kids? Am I reaching them? Am I teaching them the things that they need um, as a human being? Um, it's, it's not about the literature for me. It's about the person. My biggest challenge is every year learning that senior class and figuring out how I need to adapt and adjust and what I need to change and how I need to help them more um, or do more of, do less of, to get them to where I want them to be so that they can be successful when they leave. The connection that I get to have, sorry, um, the connections that I get to make with my kids, and y'all are my kids, um, is indescribable. And it's awesome, and it happens, luckily for me, it happens really quick in the year, and so the bond just grows. And then I have several students, after gra they graduate, they text me or call me or message me on Facebook or come up here to visit um, and like share their lives. So that's, that's it for me. That's what keeps me going. So I guess the one thing that I would say is be aware of how you present yourself around others because you don't know how it's going to affect somebody else. Um, in the positive or the negative, and share stuff. Like, talk to people. Find people. You don't have to have a lot. But find people. And, of course, we'd like to thank Miss Thorne for all she does for the students and our school. And, after all, I hope you enjoyed my story on just one of the many great teachers LISD supports us with. And, of course, thank you to Miss Thorne for being a positive impact every day for every student. Volunteers visited several Lubbock ISD campuses for the fifth annual United We Read. This year, the volunteers read A Bad Case of the Stripes by David Shannon. Along with sharing the story, volunteers also helped students with a fun craft that went along with the book. And each student in the class received a copy of the book to take home with them. Essacado Matador football players received a special gift from Marshalls. The department store donated nearly $1,000 to the team's clothing drive. Head coach William Blaylock explains that they want to make sure students athletes have what they needed. That includes professional attire, and not only for athletic events, but also for interviews and other professional opportunities. It's awesome to have the community support that people want to see them be successful in life, and they need that just as much as they need cheers in the stands on Friday nights. Lubbock Guys D Fine Arts students took part in the second annual West Texas Print Fest. Along with collaborating on an art project, students toured a special exhibit celebrating the Louise Hopkins Underwood Center for the Arts 25th Anniversary. The exhibit features various artists whose work has been displayed at LUCA over the past 25 years. Over to you, Zach. Thanks, Zeke. In our last show, I promised to bring you a story on Lubbock Impact. And, well, here it is. I spoke to Ms. Robertson and a volunteer on what is Lubbock Impact and why is it important. Welcome to Lubbock Impact, where on the menu tonight is meatloaf, mashed potatoes, green beans, and cake. Here, people are making an impact by helping the underprivileged of Lubbock, providing a free hot meal every Wednesday. But that's not all. Lubbock Impact also provides free med medical, dental, and eye clinics. Even better, the people you see serving food are volunteers, different every week. And Miss Becky says, 
Lubbock Impact wouldn't be anything without volunteers. I would say I just think taking a few hours out of my own time to help someone else just create such a big impact to them even though I might not realize it myself and just helping others is good. I think it's really cool to see um, just how people you don't even think would need help do and just how something so little can make a big impact on someone else. Um, I just think that not everyone has the um, not everyone has the ability to volunteer, and so I think I can and I like to do it in my free time, even though it is necessary. Community we call friends that we look forward to get to see each, each other each week. Lord, thank you for the protection that you got us all back here. And if you would like to learn more about Lubbock Impact, visit their website at lubbockimpact.com. The Lubbock Professional Firefighters Association continued their Coats for Kids campaign. They delivered coats to every student at Williams Elementary. This donation is a tradition for the association. We are going on 10 years that we've done this, but they love doing it. They love coming out and helping the kids and uh, just seeing the smiles on the kids' face. In fact, I was, I was telling a story earlier, uh, a few years ago when we were passing out coats, I think it was like 32 degrees when we came out, and I actually saw kids coming to school in t-shirts. And I was just like, well, we got to hurry up and get these kids coats. But that day, we delivered brand new coats to them. So, uh, you know, it's filling the need. The association hosts a golf tournament each year to raise money to pay for the coats. The doors of Talkington's new Fine Arts Wing are open. Just ahead, we'll take you to the ribbon cutting and share how this new facility is innovating music education. And later, from action to drama, Sam takes a look at the newest movies heading to theaters. You're watching The Connection by Lubbock ISD TV. You wanna skip with us? Come on bro, it'll be fun. Man, it ain't gonna be no trouble. Just come with us. Bro, come on, don't be lame. Come on bro, it'll be fun. Come on man, it ain't gonna be that much trouble. Stop. Will this really affect my life? I need help. Just say no. Stop. 85% of high schoolers have felt peer pressure. Say no to substances. Say no to bullies. Say no to cheating. Say no to peer pressure. Okay. <laughs> Ow, son of a... Stay with some sanity and watch your profanity. Welcome back. The doors are now open at the Talkington School for Young Women Leaders, new fine arts wing. And we were there for the ribbon cutting and have more on what this adds to the school. This is such an exciting day. We've been watching the progress of the building and now our students actually get to use it. Our bond committee in 2018 felt very strongly that this needed to happen um, so that all our girls here at Talkington had access to the same type of fine arts facilities as students at other high school campuses. And so now that's finally true and we're just thrilled and grateful to our community for their support of that bond. This shows our commitment as a district in valuing fine arts as an important part of our students' educational experience. So this is a 29,000 square foot facility. It offers a 600 seat auditorium with state-of-the-art acoustics um, and then four new classrooms, orchestra, art, and music classes. We are beyond excited to be able to open this facility. It is um, a long time coming. 15 years in the making. The opportunities that it is going to afford our girls is unbelievable. We've been functioning in elementary size classrooms for the last 15 years and to have a space such as this, the girls can finally all practice together, have a stage to go on to really push their sound out. The collaboration that the girls have never been able to all be in the same class together because of the space limitations. The 
opportunities that our kids have for piano. We have the Spirio piano and the collaboration with Wayland. It is just incredible the opportunities it's going to bring. <laughs> to finally have a home, just to be able to have it in your own space and then have a place to call home so when our families come they feel like this is a community. It is really exciting. I've been ex so excited my seven years at Talkington to have my senior piano recital but I've always had to worry about it being at like another school because that's how it's always been. This feels like we we have a spot now. We feel cherished and valued because the Fine Arts Wing has a spot to host those events where we can share our talents and share our music with the community and so it's really nice to have a home um, that we can kind of call our own. Superintendent Dr. Kathy Rolo visited with students at Dunbar College Preparatory Academy. Dr. Rolo shared her journey through Lovick ISD and Texas Tech, explaining how education helped her become the professional she is today. The visit inspired students as they kicked off college and career week activities on campus. Estacado PBIS ambassadors joined with Chick-fil-A to support students at Irvin Elementary. They donated 175 books so students could add to their home libraries. Plus, high schoolers took time to read with the future matadors. It was a similar story at Wheelock Elementary. Members of the Monterey High School Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy bundled books to donate to pre-K through second grade students. Plansmen visit each classroom to deliver the books and snap a quick pic. As a part of Chick-fil-A Leader Academy at Monterey High School, um, we're doing a million dollar book giveaway. So Chick-fil-A Leader Academies all over the nation um, are donating books um, to local elementary schools or charities. And we love giving back to the community, but also partnering uh, with Lubbock ISD and just to see the impact that these high school students and high school student leaders are having on their community um, is really special. Lubbock ISD Special Services held their second annual safety fair. The event gives students a chance to interact with first responders and other community members. It also teaches them different safety skills from chemical safety to street safety and much more. Monterey High School students enjoyed a special lunch. The Chef Community Council hosted Passport to Germany. Chef Jeff Sierra from the YWCA created the menu, which included bratwurst, pretzels, and an apple strudel. Students at McKenzie Middle School recently had fun carving jack o lanterns and they donated them to the city's pumpkin trail. And we visited the classroom to share more about this service project. Good job. We are carving pumpkins to donate to the pumpkin trail here in Lubbock. It's a project we've done for four or five years at least. We have a friend who donates pumpkins to our class. He's a pumpkin farmer from up by Farwell and he delivered pumpkins to our classroom and we carve them and then we will take them over to the pumpkin trail. Our class will go and visit the pumpkin trail to find our pumpkins and see all of the displays they do. They get to feel inside the pumpkins and they get to choose a partner to carve their pumpkin with. And so yesterday we worked on making a design and looked at online to find some different ideas of what they wanted. We talked about some of those ideas online are really, really difficult. And, you know, we might need to think of something that we can carve in an hour here at school because we don't have three days to do that. I just like to see them grow and learn about the different parts of the pumpkin, the textures of the pumpkin. Honestly, even practice like cutting and knife skills and how to be safe. And But still, you know, they are middle school, so we're going to try to encourage them to use those knives and things appropriately and, and carve their pumpkins. Let's start this way. I think it's a really good opportunity for our class to give back to the community. The pumpkin trail at the Arboretum asks for two to 3,000 pumpkins every year, and we contribute 10 to 20, you know, every year, and we're just doing our part to be a part of the community. Harwell Elementary also got into the Halloween spirit. They recently hosted their fall festival, and the event gives families an opportunity to interact with staff and other superstar families during the festival. Students took part in games, a trunk or treat, and even bouncy houses. It was gender reveal day for family and consumer science students at McKenzie Middle School. After discovering whether they would carry a boy or girl, students dolled up their flower sack babies. The project teaches students various parenting skills and highlights the responsibilities that come with starting a family. 
As we know, Halloween is over, and now holiday movies are here. After the break, Sam shares details on a new sequel to a Christmas favorite. This is The Connection by Lubbock ISD TV. We'll be right back. Reading sucks. Reading is Doing terrible. Everything. I hate it so much. <laughs> Guys, reading takes you to new worlds. Mark Schmader? I love your fuck. Excuse me, ma'am. Literature is... I'm already reading. Yeah, I seen that football game yesterday. Yeah, I remember that. Wait. Yeah, right, you trying to skip with us? Come on, bro. It'll be fun. Ain't hey, no trouble, man. Just come with us. I need help. Can you say no? Stop. 85% of high schoolers have felt peer pressure. Don't be afraid to speak up. Say no to bullies. Say no to peer pressure. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Sam Kunkel with your Entertainment Connection. Hollywood has some big movies lined up for theaters this November. Here's some of the new releases. This is Delta Launch Control. Go for launch. Three, two, main engine start, and liftoff. November movie releases lift off with Goodnight Oppie. The documentary about the Mars rover Opportunity is narrated by Angela Bassett and touches down for a limited theatrical run on November 4th followed by a prime video on the 23rd. Angela Bassett will be seen and heard on the big screen a week later in Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, the follow-up to Marvel Studios' 2018 smash hit lands in theaters November 11th. He's not just a chef, he's a storyteller. Anya Taylor-Joy and Ray Fine star in the dark comedy The Menu, where well-heeled diners receive more than a culinary experience. Dinner is served on November 18th. Movies are dreams. Steven Spielberg's semi-autobiographical The Fablemans opens the Thanksgiving holiday weekend as a young man discovers the magic of making movies. The Fablemans arrives in theaters Wednesday, November 23rd. Lock the doors. Stay in your rooms. Everyone is in danger. Daniel Craig is back as Detective Benoit Blanc in Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. The Who Done It debuts in limited release on November 23rd, ahead of its Netflix premiere in December. The first full trailer is out for the sequel to A Christmas Story. One day you're playing Kick the Can with kids named Flick and Schwartz. I triple dog dare you! And the next thing you know, you're a certified adult. Ralphie! A grown-up Ralphie discovers making Christmas magical for your family isn't as easy as his dad made it look. Fragile! A Christmas Story Christmas premieres on November 17th on HBO Max. When Manifest was canceled after three seasons, viewers thought they'd never learn what really happened to the passengers of Flight 828. But a fan campaign helped revive the mystery series. We've all been missing, presumed dead for five and a half years. Manifest was presumed dead until fans helped bring the show back for a fourth and final season. I was walking up and down the halls of our stages and I was just thinking like, this doesn't feel done. It must be a sign. That's what I'm afraid of. Show creator Jeff Rake broke the news to the cast on a group chat. It was one of the best days of my life. It was definitely the best day of my professional life. It was just blowing up. Like we were like, what is going on? What are we doing? It was just like a play by play. I mean, we're very lucky to have a showrunner that keeps us in the loop. We have to follow every lead. It was a dream come true to be able to come back and we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't have had this opportunity if it wasn't for the fans and the love and the incredible appreciation they have shown since day one for us. What an unbelievable up and down journey. And it really, it just doesn't happen anymore. And, and it's not lost on any of us how lucky we are. We didn't fly into the storm. It flew into us. It chose us. A direct link to divine consciousness. Just nothing but gratitude that we uh, got to come back and finish the story. It's way it wasn't an accident. 
We're supposed to save the passengers together. I feel very lucky to be able to keep telling that story, but also to just like forge these relationships that I've been so lucky to make. I am enormously grateful for to like the fans in that campaign and everything that's happened. Whatever happens, we'll get through it together. The final season of Manifest will be split into two 10 episode halves. The first half is now available on Netflix. Best believe I'm still bejeweled when I walk in the room. I can still make the whole place shimmer. Taylor Swift has set an unbreakable record. Songs from her new album, Midnight's, recently filled the entire top 10 of Billboard's latest Hot 100 chart. Antihero came in number one. In fact, all 13 of the songs on Midnight's we're in the charts top 15. It's the first time any artist has taken all top 10 spots in the charts, nearly 65 year history. If you ever wanted to wield a proton pack and catch ghosts, there's a new video game that lets you live out your ghost busting dreams. Let's check out Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. You're a pretty big fan of the busters, aren't you? Well, we're back. We're up, running, and firing on all 16 cylinders. Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed features the voices of Dan Aykroyd and Ernie Hudson. Things are heating up around here, which is why we need help. That's where you come in. And gameplay, putting you in the role of a Ghostbuster. This is a really cool idea. It gives players the chance to uh, assume the role of a Ghostbuster and customize their character, their avatar, in any way that they want to with different outfits and hairstyles and faces. Looks like you've got the two and the talent. Welcome to the team. Cooperative gameplay lets up to four players team up as professional paranormal investigators and eliminators. Plus, a fifth as something else. Here's the cool thing. One other person, and hopefully it's a friend of yours, will play as the ghost. The ghost can win the matches as well just by scaring everybody out of the environment and haunting it. And, uh, and then the Ghostbusters lose. But if the Ghostbusters catch you as the ghost, then they win. The things you'll experience here will be like nothing you've ever seen before. NASA captured an image of the sun that looks a bit like a jack-o'-lantern. It actually shows splotches on the sun's surface that are cooler than the surrounding areas. NASA calls it a smiling sun. But some Twitter users saw something else. Users compared it to the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters, a lion, a blowfish, and some snack foods that have smiley faces. So guys, what do you think it looks like? Um, I'm gonna say it looks like, it does look like the Ghostbuster. Um, not more so the Jack Lantern. I think people are caught up in the Halloween spirit still. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're past that, so. I'm gonna say it does not look like a Jack Lantern. A little freaky too, yeah, too yeah. freaky for it. Yeah, 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 a little bit. <laughs> see, all I see is a smi like a little smiley face, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah? Reminded me of a movie I saw one time about this kid and he wore like a burlap sack over his face and had like a stitched smile. Oh, uh, I think I, uh, I forgot the name of that one, but I think I know what you're talking about, man. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, Sam. Make sure you're following Lubbock ISD TV on social media. We're sharing more great stories, funny commercials, and exclusive sports interviews. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And check out our website, LubbockISDTV.com for a live stream of our channel. Plus, we have all of our content for you on demand. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. This has been a production of the students and staff at Lubbock ISD TV. Being at the ATC is a privilege, and with this privilege comes some responsibilities. Phones are to be out of sight and unheard once class begins. So hang up and hang out with us. This year, it's ATC. Man, that's crazy. Z, you didn't even punch the camera one. <coughs> oh, my bad. Remember guys, with the new year comes new rules.
One of those rules is the new cell phone policy. Keep the phones away in the classroom and keep in mind that refusal of the new policy could result in disciplinary reinforcement. So like we say, hang up and hang out and always keep learning.